Um, hi, um, my name is Sebastian Reichel. I'm a kernel engineer from Collabora and the power supply subsystem maintainer. So, um, actually, what is power supply? Um, it's the kernel subsystem taking care of battery fuel gauges and chargers. And um, also, there's power off and reset drivers on the subsystem, but um, I will skip this today. Um, it nowadays lives in uh, driver's power supply. Um, until recently, it was just in driver's power. So if you have an old kernel, you should probably update to a newer tree. And um, the aim is to expose battery and charger information in a unified way. Um, we are SysFS and we are UDEF. Um, the subsystem has been written by Anton in 2007, and he maintained it quite some time until 2014 when Dimitri took it over for a short time and then he was kind of missing and when I tried to submit a driver and there was no maintainer, the maintainership was taken over by me. So what does it provide? Um, there's a huge amount of information coming, especially from batteries, um, as you can see in this example, which is from this notebook. Um, it's exposed as a normal files, so you can just cut them and write into them. Um, at least some of them are writable. And as alternative to just cutting them, it's also possible to get them via a UDEF, um, which is the preferred way because you will get pushed new information when interrupts are coming in. Um, but at the moment there's a problem with some of them um, because um, all drivers that add custom SysFS files um, are not uh, visible in UDEF. I'm currently fixing this up. So all information about which um, properties are available can be found in the documentation file. Um, until recently there was just a generic text file uh, giving random information and recently Adam Thompson who worked on a patch set for USB, I will come to that in the next slide, um, added nice um, RB style documentation like every other SysFS file. Um, just look into that one if you have questions about any properties. So with that, let's move to recent additions. One of them is the new USB type. Um, until recently, um, USB, well, Handling was not that nice in the power supply subsystem, meaning that there could be only a single type. Um, and if you had a charger which could handle different types, um, it was not possible to switch types easily at runtime. Um, this has now been fixed by Adam, who added the USB type. It's writable, and uh, you can always see which type is currently selected and which types are available by your hardware which will become more interesting now that um, notebooks are um, released with USB Type-C for charging. Yes, Not all drivers has yet, have yet been converted. Uh, the main reason is that I try to avoid breaking the user space interface and I have not yet thought of a good way to avoid this for these three drivers. Um, none, there's no other driver that is currently uh, using any USB subtypes. So there's just C drivers that have problems. Um, in addition, uh, one of the things that is a bit tricky is that um, the power supply subsystem assumes that the batteries are smart batteries. So basically the battery cells and the fuel gauk are connected as one hardware and the fuel gauk has much information about the cells like what's the maximum capacity, what's the maximum voltage. Unfortunately, this is not always true, especially on embedded platforms. The um, battery cells and the actual fuel gauge are two different things. So we now have um, a different structure which describes just the cells, which is consumed by the fuel gauge driver, and the fuel gauge can merge information. Um, this was initially written by Lion Brack and is uh, constantly updated to add more features. So if you have such a system, um, please make sure to use the new way to describe the battery cells. Here. 
one of the shortcomings of the system is that there's currently no way to have multiple fuel gauges for the same battery. Um, this is fortunately not used often in hardware setups. So far I had one system where just one of the um, fuel gauges has been exposed. If you expose the same fuel gauge, uh, uh, both fuel gauges for the same battery, then um, user space assumes that there are two batteries installed. And at the moment there's no good way to expose this kind of setup. Um, if somebody have, has ideas, please contact me and um, we will try to integrate this. And the second thing that is currently not supported um, is if the kernel has to manually keep the system charging your system. Um, on most systems there's some kind of embedded controller that handles the charging and you just have to trigger it, say it, please start charging and um, I will tell you when to stop. Um, but there's no real monitoring required because that is done by the embedded controller. Again, on some embedded systems, this is not true, and the kernel or user space has to take care of this. And um, as far as I know, all existing embedded systems currently do this in user space, which is a bad solution because if it's booted within it bin SH, then you will have no charging, so your system will power off at some time. Um, so a proper solution is required, and again, I'm interested in getting patches for this. Yes, that's so much from the power supply system. So if anyone has questions, please ask them. Doesn't seem to be the oh, okay. Can somebody give him the mic? There. Um, I have a, a laptop that doesn't um, charge unless the vendor's power supply is plugged into it. It's a little leap or whatever. Um, and I, as far as I can tell, it's the it's the BIOS and uh, that that keeps it from charging if it's uh, the wrong part. If it doesn't find the EEPROM or whatever serial is on it, um, it could just enough power to uh, keep going but not to charge. Um, is that at all detectable in this um, subsystem at all? So. The on I, th I think it's just the BIOS that yes. keeps it from getting... So on, on x86, there's basically almost every time an embedded controller involved in charging, and this is the controller which takes care of actually charging the battery. Um, so it's this controller that stops the system from charging. Um, I suppose you can see it in the SysFS by seeing that it does not charge, but there's not much way to go around it except changing the firmware on the embedded controller. Okay. Any other questions? Um, there is some sort of charger subsystem from Samsung. Is that it, or is this something else? Um, no. And how is this related to the other thing? So there is uh, from Samsung. Uh, I don't have a slide for that. Um, there is a um, charging manager from Samsung, but yeah, it's only used by Samsung, and it's a specific driver. It's not um, core support from the power supply subsystem, but just very specific for one target. But it's similar to what I would like to have in the core. So we now have uh, basically two things doing the same in the kernel? Well, the, the, there's currently no support for, for this. I would like to have support for this, and then the uh, charging manager can use this. Okay. Got it. Thanks. Uh, one question, Eric? Yes. Uh, we spoke a lot of, about firmware, about security uh, during this conference. And I was wondering, could we do something weird in software with the batteries? Because we know it's dangerous batteries. I mean, the LiPo are susceptible to overcharging and overcurrent. So is there any option to make something bad with, uh, with bad intentions? This yeah. depends on the actual hardware being used. 
and on most notebooks, the embedded controller takes care of the actual charging and it takes care of not overcharging the battery and stopping charging when it's out of temperature. Um, on embedded platforms, it basically is what the charging framework has to take care of. So the answer is yes, right? So yeah, on those platforms, it would be possible to do something bad, yes. Cool, <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you.